Now, Shaitan, his job is to try to mess us up in some way, get us off the straight track. So I'll highlight some of the ways he uses our past against us, and we think these are thoughts that are happening inside of our own heads, while it's actually the shaitan. And that's one of his great successes, is you think that these are your own thoughts, but these are wasawis, these are just whispers of the devil, where he's trying to make you fall back into something that you may have fallen into before. One of the ways that he does that, is that maybe, for example, you used to be a better person. Maybe you used to be more, more diligent with your prayers. Maybe you were more observing of, you know, if Allah forbade something, you stayed away from it. And if Allah said, this is allowed, and that's the only thing, you, you were content with that. And you didn't fall into Allah's disobedience. And you were good. You could look back and you say you were good. And some people are like that. They look back and they say, you know what? There was a time I was a much better person. I'm disappointed with myself now. I remember the time when I used to stand in prayer and I used to, to cry. I don't know the last time I've shed a tear. Or I used to feel so much connected to Allah, but I was a much better person. So there's one thing to compare yourself to somebody else, but even when you compare yourself to yourself, some people were in a much better place before. And so shaitan says, well, that's... That part of you is dead. That's gone. That's never coming back. Listen, that, that's over with. This is who you are now. And he'll make you almost give up on yourself. While the reality is that if you are capable, if Allah made you capable of living a certain way and living by a certain standard and you upheld it, you were able to do it, then that actually means that you will forever be capable. That's actually proof to yourself. It's one thing that you never accomplish something. And you say, well, I can't do it. Well, maybe there's some truth to that. Maybe you haven't even tried. Or maybe it's, you, I can't say for sure that you're capable. But you lived by something. You had certain capability. You were doing better. Now it's known that you have that, you, you possess that in you, that faith in you, that strength in you. And so shaitan wants you to, to convince you that you no longer have that capability because of whatever experiences you've gone through or I've gone through, now we will never go back to who we were again. Now understand something, emotionally maybe you can't go back. Emotionally when somebody's scarred, maybe they're changed forever and that's okay. That's life. That happens. Maybe if somebody, you know, the loss of a child is not something easy to get over, for example. So there are kinds of trauma or kinds of experiences that maybe our entire lives will be chipping away at trying to heal and we, we may never get there. But shaitan uses that to mess you up not emotionally but spiritually, to mess with your connection with Allah and to basically get you to say, well, you know what, you've gone through these experiences, so what's the point of prayer? You know, the, the, the prayers no longer count. And so that's one kind of attack the shaitan uses against you and me is to, to make you lament, make you think back with regret about better days that are never going to come back for you. The other thing shaitan wants you to do in the, you know, from, from behind is you know, things that you, bad experiences that you had and you start questioning why did this happen to me? Right? You, you and I have gone through terrible experiences in life. These are, these are, this is a part of life. Allah created this life as a trial. And every one of us has different kinds of trials. And some of those trials are not easy. And when you think about what happened, it's very, it's very painful. And it can be paralyzing. It can be something that you just, you're overwhelmed almost reliving the event that occurred in the past. And one of the things shaitan wants is to, to keep you there to keep you thinking about the past, to keep you thinking about what happened, and keep questioning, why did this happen to me? Why did this happen to me? Why did this happen to me? Maybe I deserve it. Maybe I'm cursed. Maybe I'm no good. This is why Allah is angry at me. This is why He made this happen to me. And so you live in that moment that happened some time ago that Allah actually brought you out of, but shaitan doesn't want you to come out of it. He wants you to stay in that hopelessness. Because he wants you to be convinced, like he's convinced, that Allah has no hope for him. 
or that he's hopeless case. So people will develop, you, you and I might develop, because we're thinking about that event all the time, not just anger towards people who hurt us, but even towards Allah. Like, why did he let this happen to me? Why did he do this to me? I didn't deserve it. And so when you, when you think about the kinds of experiences that prophets went through, alayhim salatu wasalam, you will appreciate something. Allah, the, the, the prophets Allah talks about in the Qur'an are in so many cases people that had such difficult lives. They had such, you know, even before they became prophets, they had extremely, extremely difficult lives. Think about the life of our own messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whose parents die in childhood, right? Who goes through, you know, one, one care to another care to another care and everybody, every time he has somebody that is basically taking care of him, they pass away. And he's passed on to someone else, and he's passed on to someone else. How difficult is that for a child? How difficult is, for, is it for a parent to lose their child? Our Messenger experienced losing children, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So these are the kinds of pains Allah put even prophets through, alayhi wa sallam. The reason I'm saying that is for you and me to know that these pains that we experience in life are not a proof that Allah has cursed you or Allah is angry at you. That's not the case. Some of the best people that ever lived had very difficult lives, had very hard times. And it's not because Allah doesn't love them. So this life was made with trials, with difficulties that we have to learn to navigate. Shaitan wants us to believe everything that happens to us, somehow figure out a way to blame Allah for it. Figure out a way to blame Allah. Why? Because that's what he did. He blamed Allah. When he refused to do sajda and he was cast out, he blamed Allah immediately. That's where he wants you to get to. And so he uses that past bad experience, that painful experience, to try to pull you away from Allah also. Another way he uses your past, maybe some of us, we lived a life of sin before. Maybe you had friends or you know, your relationships that were leading you down a road of sin, that you kept falling in and falling in and falling in. And you figured out a way to make tawbah to Allah and you cut off those friendships and you cut off those relationships. Whether those people are, you know, they, their judgment is with Allah. But you for yourself, you decided that those people may not be evil, but I know that when I'm in their company, or when I'm around, then I fall into evil. So I'm going to try to protect myself, and I'm going to pull away as much as I can, and try to fix myself with Allah. You will know, in your personal life, who those people are. And maybe you had people like that in your life that were pulling you into sin, whether they realized it themselves or not. And maybe it's not even their fault, maybe it's your own weakness. But since you recognize that, you say, you know what? Every time I've tried, I've fallen back into sin, I'm going to discontinue some of these relationships, not because I hate these people, not because I'm better than them, not because, you know, I, I want them to suffer, but because I want to save myself. I want to pull myself away. And when you pull yourself away, shaitan will come and say, hey, don't you miss the old friendship? You don't miss those guys? You don't miss her man? You don't miss this? You don't miss that? And you want, he wants you to pull back. Go back. Go back. Go back. The same way some people left sin. Literally sin. They left drinking. They left drugs. You know, they left adultery. They left fornication. They left evil deeds, they walked away from them, they changed. But sometimes the devil comes and triggers you and says, hey, you're going through a hard time, just one time, just go back. Not forever, but come on, it's a, difficult, it's a hard, you had a hard week, it's been a tough month, you've gone through a lot, just go back just a little bit. And you know what that used to be like. There's a saying in Arabic, everything forbidden is desirable, right? So even though we, after faith, you develop a, a regret and, a, and an embarrassment over the sins you and I may have committed, and we develop 
uh, almost a hatred for repeating those sins again, at the end of the day, we're also human beings. And human beings have temptations and desires. And that's one of the things that shaitan wants to manipulate. So he'll pull, try to pull you back. And you have to be mindful of that.